Thanks again for joining me here at Preaching the Gospel That Saves, the station that is dedicated to our Apostle Paul's My Gospel. Did you notice that? I am dedicated to our Apostle Paul's Gospel. Not Peter's, not James, not John, not even what the Apostle Paul says in Romans 9, 10, and 11. To Israel, not to the body of Christ. So, if you're having a hard time trying to figure out what gospel saves your never-dying soul? Well, you found the right place. You found the right YouTube station. And I'm going to tell you what saves your never-dying soul. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul tells us very clear in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now, how do you know that's the right gospel compared to the gospel of the kingdom, or compared to what is written in Romans 9, 10, and 11? This is the gospel that you have to believe. It's about believing, okay? Okay? There's no works involved with believing. Okay, Romans 9, 10, and 11 is all about Israel confessing and believing in their heart. This is just about believing in what Christ did for us on Calvary's cross. That is not what it says in Romans 9, 10, and 11. That is not what Peter, James, and John preach. And that is not what the Lord Jesus Christ preaches, preaches in his earthly ministry in the Old Testament for Israel, okay? So get it right. And by the way, this gospel that Paul has preached, he's preached it to everyone already. And the end hasn't come. And the end hasn't come. Did you know that? Because a lot of people are hung up on, we got to preach the gospel of the kingdom to everyone, and once that's done, then the end comes, right? Well, that's not what Paul says. Did you know that? Did you know he already preached the gospel to everyone? If you don't know that, email me, okay? Email me. And if you can't figure out where he preached the gospel, where it says that, that he preached the, the gospel to everyone, email me from my website, from the contact page, okay? Not on the gossip page at the bottom of the YouTube video, right? You don't want to go there. But maybe I should just tell you right now. Colossians 123. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, Wherefore, I, Paul, am made a minister. So the gospel has been preached to everyone under heaven. So how come you haven't heard about it until you got to this YouTube station? Because Paul told everyone, but they didn't tell anybody else. That's how it works today. That's how it worked back then. All right, as we continue... In our series, if our Apostle Paul was president today, this is part five, if he was president, things would be a lot different in this country. Things would be a lot different if Pauline truth was resonant in everyone's inner man especially these so-called churchgoers, the world would be entirely different right now. 
So now that you're saved, you heard the gospel of your salvation, right? 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. What company are you going to fellowship with? Does it matter? Any translation will do, right? Agree to disagree? Covenant theology. Systematic theology. Dispensational theology. Calvinism? Arminianism? What camp are you in? What company are you with? Matthew 25 ministries? How about that one? That's what most politicians believe. That's why we're helping all the immigrants. Read Matthew 25. That's what they believe. That's how they believe they're going to be saved. What is your belief system? Does it matter? It matters to our Apostle Paul. Note the true Pauline pattern. Paul rebuked Peter to his face because Peter had it coming. Galatians 2.11 but when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Paul fired Barnabas, Acts 15, 39 through 40. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. Paul named names on numerous occasions. 2 Timothy 4.10 For Demas, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. First, or 2 Timothy 4.14 Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. 1 Timothy 1.20 Of whom is Hymenius and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Paul instructs us to mark them that depart from right doctrine. Romans 16, 17, and 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. How do you do that if everything in the Bible is for everyone? You can't. If every translation is will do, then no translation is true, and then all you do is agree to disagree, and relativism is basically your ministry. Mm -hmm. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Paul even goes so far as to tell us to shun believers who have wrong doctrines. 2 Thessalonians 3, 14 and 15. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. So if Paul were president, we would be concerned about having the doctrine right and being with like-minded believers. People would be calling people out. Isn't that what you do at your congregation when you're so-called pastors up on the so-called stage, and you know he's teaching something clearly wrong, and you raise your hand and you tell him, right? Yeah, right. Not agreeing to disagree. Welcome back to the great debate. Did you know that in the late 1800s, they would have a church conference, not a retreat. Okay, we're soldiers. We don't retreat. Men's retreats, women's retreats, that, prob that all goes about being an apologetic, right? Apologizing for God's words, retreating and not being a soldier. Okay, when they had church conferences back in the 1800s, they had a debate. Okay, it wasn't a retreat. It was a conference and they would debate about different issues. It was always about the doctrines in your Bible. Uh-huh. Not a retreat. Remember, we are soldiers. We don't retreat. We engage in the battle. So if our Apostle Paul was the president, we would be engaged in the battle as a good soldier over right doctrine. Thanks again for joining me. I know this is a short one, but it's a lot of material. I'm sure 
you are not taking note of people who don't know the right doctrine. I'm sure you're not having any company with them, right? I'm sure you're naming names of people who teach things wrong, right? And you're telling others about them. Even those in your own camp. I'm sure you're doing that. Thanks again for joining me here. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my bookstore blog. Any doctrinal questions, email me from the contact page of my website at preachingthegospelthatsaves.com. Put up a like. Thanks again for listening.